all right friends i am sure you would have written this whole thing now few students have asked me a doubt that sir in this formula dividends in future are definitely observable but you know sir the price of the equity share is missing some time back sir you said one thing that if the investment time horizon is 3 years then we are going to receive what all cash flows d1 d2 d3 and p3 so that was making sense that 3 years we have received dividend and then by end of third year we have received the price of the share that is because in that scenario in that example the investor has decided to keep the time horizon as 3 years in that case it becomes a finite time period it becomes a finite time horizon of investment guys look at what this formula is resembling can you notice t equals to 1 over here means the interval of t will move as t equals to 1 t equals to 2 t equals to 3 so interval is 1 1 year and what is the limit of t look at the limit of t on top of the summation symbol it is infinite means for infinite period you are going to receive dividend when will you receive dividend for infinite period when you remain equity investor for an infinite period so where is the question of receiving the realized value of the share price the moment you are talking about the share price to be realized in future as a component of your future cash flow means your period of investment is finite so there may be two possibilities when you are considering the dividend discount model you are talking about infinite timeline or a finite timeline this formula what i am mentioning over here indicates what can you give your responses in one word finite period or infinite period the obvious answer will be what infinite period so infinite period valuation will be done this way finite period valuation will be done differently correct so let us do one thing let us uh, write the notes further now i am talking about finite period and i am talking about what one year holding period ddm means now i am keeping the finite period very close just one year so now the moment i write the heading things will strike your mind instantly you tell me when it is one year holding period what is going to happen one year holding period what is going to happen you are going to receive dividend by end of the year d1 then because your investment time horizon is only one year you as an equity investor you are going to sell the share in the market and get the price after one year which price you are going to get p1 correct so after one year you will be getting two cash flows d1 and p1 d1 and p1 both of these are future cash flows when d1 and p1 both of these are future cash flows you discount these to their present value the discounting rate will be ke so without even me putting forward the same thing on screen you can visualize the formula i would say p0 equals to d1 divided by 1 plus ke that is the present value of the dividend and then p1 divided by 1 plus ke take the aggregate of both the present values or you can consolidate the both values that is p0 equals to d1 plus p1 divided by 1 plus ke any notation you write it is going to give you the same outcome so let us write this thing as well about one year holding period ddm for a holding period of one year the value of the stock today is the present value of any dividends during the year plus the present value of the expected price of the stock at end of the year referred to as its terminal value the one year holding period ddm is simply 
value equals to dividend to be received divided by 1 plus k and year end price divided by 1 plus k. We can write it this way or in a shorter version what I told you some time back that dividend to be received is D1, price to be received is P1, both have common denominator that is 1 plus k. So, you may directly write the whole formula as current value that is P0 equals to D1 plus P1 whole divided by 1 plus k. That also will be the formula notation that I will provide to you on screen, but first you write down what you find on screen and then I take you ahead. All right, friends, I am sure you have completed writing this whole thing. Let us move ahead and now talk more about one year holding period DDM. So, I just mentioned to you that if it is one year holding period, by end of one year you are going to receive two cash flows D1 and P1. Both of these cash flows you need to discount to their present values. Now guys one more thing, huh? when we say one year holding period means it is known that the investor is investing into this equity with the intention that the investor is going to disinvest or sell this equity after one year. So, the only two cash flows that the investor would be receiving will be D1 and P1. The present value of that can be found by considering discounting rate of K and the computed present value will resemble P0. So, let me highlight few things D1 and P1 will be basically the future cash flows K e will be the expected rate of return or the required rate of return by the equity investor and P0 is nothing but the present value of these future cash flows. So, do one thing quickly take note of this as well and then I take you ahead. All right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us uh, write some further details over here we would want to define these variables where you have written P0 equals to D1 plus P1 divided by 1 plus K where D1 equals to expected dividend receivable by year end P1 is the expected market price of equity share by year end KE is the expected rate of return by equity shareholder or also known as equity capitalization rate and same thing resembles the cost of equity for the company. So, you need to mention that as well. This is basically for your own notes and P0 is the intrinsic value of equity share. Now, please uh, try to understand one thing as I told you earlier, what is the purpose? What is the objective? Why are we determining this value? The sole objective of determining this value rather from the point when we started discussing equity valuation, the core objective of equity valuation is to derive a fair value which can be compared with the quoted market price and then you can decide whether the stock is underpriced or overpriced and accordingly take your investment decision. So, that is going to be the ultimate goal. Now, to have a much clearer understanding once you note down this, I will be taking you through some important examples. So, first you write down this whole thing quickly and then we move on to examples. All right, friends, once you have written this whole thing, let us move on to some examples. Example 1 expected dividend receivable by the year end is $4.50. Expected market price of the equity share by year end is $30. The expected rate of return by the shareholder is 25 percent per annum. Determine the intrinsic value of the share. The current market price of equity share is $25. Is it worth investing in this share? So, I will give you just one minute time to answer this question. I am giving you one minute time, your time starts now. All right, friends, I gave you one minute time, the time is over. Let us check your calculations whether you were correct with that. 
So, you would have simply applied this formula and uh, just for you to be reminded what is D 1 in this case D 1 is 4.5 what is P 1 in this case P 1 is 30 what is K E the expected rate of return by the equity shareholder which is 25 percent or 0 0.25 and P 0 which is the intrinsic value of equity that is what you have to find out. So, all the values that you are knowing as information given in the question you can substitute the values in the formula and on computation you find P 0 value as 27.6 dollars. The current market price of the share is dollar 25. So, you can conclude that the stock is underpriced and it is worth investing in this share. So, please uh, write up this whole thing and then I take you ahead. All right friends, uh, I am sure you have completed writing this whole stuff. Now, let me come back to the point. See the most frequent approach that is generally followed for equity valuation is assuming an infinite period. You understand one thing if you all are equity investors each one will have a definite time horizon for their own purpose correct. Each one can have different, but if I want to generalize the situation how will I define that what will be the investment horizon that could be investor specific information am I right. It could be investor specific because someone would want to invest for 3 years only someone would want to invest for 5 years and so on. Therefore, it could be an investor specific criteria of what should be the horizon of investment. On the other side when I am talking about when I am talking about the say general aspect when I am considering every investor in the universe for this particular stock means 100 percent all the equity shareholders or stockholders of this particular investment who are equity investors. If I take everyone's criteria obviously that time I will have to consider I will have to consider the infinite period. So, the most popular approach over here will be the infinite period. So, you should consider infinite period unless a finite period is specified. So, please acknowledge one thing your calculations and your approach of determining the value will change depending upon the scenario informed to you. So, let us do one thing let us uh, write some notes further on this point that I have just discussed with you. You please write the most general form of DDM uses an infinite holding period because a corporation has an indefinite life. In an infinite period DDM the present value of all expected future dividend is calculated and there is no explicit terminal value for the stock. I explained this point to you some time back that why in that formula of infinite period there was no p value correct because you are not considering any terminal value of that stock. In practice as we will see a terminal value can be calculated at a time in the future after which the growth rate of dividend is expected to be constant. Now, gradually we are moving to an important aspect of equity valuation where we are talking about dividends and growth in dividends and that too growth in dividends being constant. I am sure you have heard of Gordon right from your early stages when you have been learning about Gordon's model a model of perpetual growth. This model has a fundamental assumption that generally the growth rate of dividends will be constant. So, first assumption is the company will pay dividends every year 
these dividends will grow and the growth rate will be constant. So Gordon has given all the angles to his model that is the multi-stage DDM which could be two stage DDM, three stage DDM but he has fundamentally given the model with an assumption that right from the initial point the growth rate in dividend is going to be constant. If the growth rate in dividend is going to be constant you keep your investment horizon as one year, five years, seven years or twenty years or even hundred years the present value will be accurately the same if the dividends are growing at a constant rate. So the infinite period dividend discount model can get transformed to an a finite period if you are using this fundamental concept introduced by Gordon and particularly when we take this matter ahead to multi stage dividend discount model that time the discussion goes to a bigger relevance and that time this constant growth will come into picture definitely. So as I said once you have written these uh, notes let me take you ahead with the heading as Gordon's model.